I can wipe. But at the same time, I, I guess, you know, when you got that phone call, number one, what were you doing when you got the phone call? I'm just curious. What <laughs> were you brewing doing? Some co- brewing some coffee, actually. I just woke up. And so what, was it Johnny Ace? It was a phone call from John Laurinaitis, and uh, I also knew it was a Friday, and I knew I wasn't going to the house show that day, so I kind of uh, figured, I'm like, whoa, this might not be good. Oh, man. So, well, I mean, to go, to go to what you're saying, I mean, yeah, I am pissed. I mean, I'm not going to um, deny that at all. This is the thing. The first time I got released, I brought it upon myself. So I kind of, uh, I accepted it, and, you know, like, I didn't, there's a lot of things I didn't do right the first time, so I accepted it, but I was also, you know, I was also motivated uh, coming back and going back to the company. And, like, you know, for, for it to turn out this way, the second time it is upsetting because I did, uh, you know, I didn't, you know, it's not like I failed a uh, drug test. I did things right, and uh, I was uh, getting really good in the ring. So, you know, it's, it is a lot more upsetting the second time around than it is the first time around. Sure. Well, and, and, and now even in the second time around, in the amount of time you've been here, you know, where you, your return time was, look at how much new talent has come in. Do you think that's a positive thing or a negative thing that WWE is bringing in so much new talent? You know, you've got new talent on superstars. You've got new talent on NXT. You've got Tough Enough. You know, there, there's this influx of new talent. Do you think guys like yourself tend to fall under the radar because there's such a constant influx of new talent, or do you think that's a good thing for the company? Uh, well, there's two ways to look at that. I mean, we got a lot of guys on the roster who are green and really can't put on, you know, can't do it in the ring. You know, let's just face that. So, I mean, I, I think young guys, and you definitely want to keep – young guys uh, coming up. I, I think WWE just has a bad um, process of bringing guys up too early, kind of like even they did with me, and thrusting them upon uh, sometimes a spotlight when they're not ready for it. And then the thing is, is when you're not ready for it, you know, you either get lost in the shuffle or whatnot, and then they, a new guy uh, can come up, and then they focus on him. And then the guy who, you know, they pushed before who wasn't ready – can make all the progress in the world, but, you know, they're not necessarily uh, going to come back to that, you know? So, I mean, that's why you have a lot of guys, you know, a lot of guys on TV probably who aren't ready for TV. I mean, I, I think you guys could probably agree. I mean, look at a guy, you think David Otunga is ready for television? You said, yeah, I don't shoot. You want me to shoot? I would love for you to go. Yeah, I would love for you to shoot. Well, I'm just saying, you, uh, you guys think David Otunga is ready for but, television? But out, of, not. But out no. of curiosity, why are you bringing up probably the one guy on the roster that, that almost looks identical to you? I mean, no. no, I mean, no he's, identical to me? I could have brought up Mason Ryan. I didn't mean to bring up Mason Ryan. Well, that, well good, yeah. good point about him. No, I, I agree with you. And I think that, unfortunately, and, you know, Otunga, another story, but a guy like Mason Ryan – you know, Batista look alike, that type of deal. And, and the fact that he hasn't been on TV, especially as prominent as you were in your first run. I mean, you were heavily prominent uh, with that whole Master Lock Challenge. I mean, you, you were getting a huge push. So I'll, I would imagine that a lot of new guys, unfortunately, that don't have the talent, that are very green, are without a question given that same shot that you were given at the beginning, which makes your uphill battle even that much steeper because they're being given the same opportunity you were, so it keeps bumping you down for a second shot around. Yeah, I mean, I, but that kind of think that's the circle of life with WWE. I mean, because even when I came in, I remember there were guys when I was getting my push who were, uh, you know, great in the ring and you know just doing well every week, keeping their nose clean, and you know they were. Uh, that, I mean, that's why I don't like. You know, I'm upset about the situation, but I'm moving on because I don't want to be another one of those guys who's sitting around bitching and whatnot. You know what I mean? The fact is I enjoyed going out there working. I took pride in my work, and, you know, nobody can take that away from me. You know, I really enjoyed it over the last year. So, you know, I'm not going to come out of this thing, uh, you know, just uh, completely bash the company or anything like that because I really enjoyed it. But, uh, you know, that's just a circle of life there. It's just like when I first got there, it was the same thing. I saw guys like Stevie Richards, Val Venus, and... You know, a number of other guys uh, who, you know, wanted that shot, but they just wouldn't give it to them for whatever reason. Well, so then speaking of moving on, you know, you posted a, 
you know, w- which was maybe just a having fun tweet yesterday where you talked about making an impact. Is that somewhere that you'd like to go? Have you had any discussions with them, even maybe prior to coming to WWE in your last run or even up to now? Well, it's funny because I sat in my car about two weeks ago and I literally uh, had just thought to myself because I was really thinking at that point, I'm like, you know, they need baby faces right now. And if they're not going to, like, you know, do something with me or invest in me right now, they're never going to do it. So I was already thinking to myself, it's like, you know, maybe I need to start reaching out and seeing uh, what else is out there. You know, I mean, let's uh, just be frank. So, um, but I didn't do it. And, <laughs> and it's funny because then you fast forward two weeks later and this happened, but I did reach out to, uh, you know, obviously I'm taking bookings. You can uh, contact well, you won't be contacting me. You'll be contacting my uh, assistant, Vess, at masterpiece83 at gmail.com. And, um, yeah, I'm going to be uh, – I reached out to uh, some people over at TNA, and we'll just see what happens with that. You know, there's, of course, the 90-day thing with WWE, but I'm not going to really rule out anything uh, this time around. You know, I just want to keep uh, an open mind. If I'm meant to keep uh, working in sports entertainment, I'm sure that's going to happen, and I'm not going to rule it out. Chris, before we let you go, and uh, I, I mean, I just kind of want to ask one more, just kind of open-ended question, and and you had brought it up earlier, and of course, a lot of people bring it up all the time, and that's what a lot of the wrestling fans that come to our website and listen to our show, they're all about it. Um, but you 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 made mention to the politics uh, playing a big part in it, not just uh, your size, your body, your not just your your ability on the mic, not just. Uh, uh, not just your ability in the ring. Um, and you probably didn't play politics in your career for whatever reason, a variety of reasons more than likely. You you may not have played it as well as you could have, especially when you kind of had that open invitation there from Hunter and, and, and Vince uh, when they gave you that talk uh, months ago. Uh, you didn't follow up, like you said. Maybe you should have done that and more. There's things you could have obviously done different. In hindsight, it's always 2020. Um, but... Let me ask, when you now kind of reflect, and at least you've had a few days, I know it's still not been that long, and I'm sure you've racked your brain constantly, um, do, you, you know, do you blame, do, can you see yourself, is, is politics, do you really feel like they have played a part at all in this? I mean, the, the, the true sense of politics that we see it as wrestling fans, I mean, there's politics in general, but, but just the overall backstage playing the game people keeping you down things like that i mean you obviously had hunter's vote months ago and you can't think of anything that's changed as far as that relationship but do you blame it politics bad timing bad economy i mean if you can sum up what in your mind you've come to some sort of conclusion of what do you do you how, well, how much do you think politics plays a part in that well, I think Tommy Dreamer put it best yesterday. Actually, I saw, like, a, I think it was a tweet or something he set out in, um, in addressing the releases. And, you know, he basically said uh, sometimes all it comes down to was one person's opinion of you. So, I mean, you know, Vince could have been, uh, like, hot on me, but then maybe Hunter wasn't anymore for whatever reason. Or Hunter couldn't think of a way to market me or something to do with me. Or, uh, you know, maybe Cena didn't like me for whatever reason. You know, sometimes it just takes one person and they're... Uh, swaying opinion you know and uh so that possibly that you know i'm feeling like that could be it i feel like tommy dreamer kind of summed it up real well with that well i tell you what i appreciate you taking the time uh to join us and and, and talk about it and i know you've got a lot to uh to look forward to whether that's tna obviously you're talking about working overseas uh you live in la is 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 acting something that might be on your agenda Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not ruling anything out. Like you said, I mean, I definitely, uh, you know, I do want to do a, a lot of international uh, wrestling still. You know, I love going to Europe. I love uh, Australia. I love, uh, you know, even going to Japan. So, I mean, that's definitely something uh, I'm fired up to do. Uh, maybe not as much indies out here. I mean, unless there's something, I don't, you know, unless there's anything good going on. I don't know with the economy nowadays. But, um, yeah, I'm not really, I'm actually going to meet agents out here in L.A. too. I mean, why not? I live in L.A. So, you know, it's just good to have uh, different avenues open and not just, uh, you know, I don't want to just think, oh, let me just book myself out in wrestling and, you know, just dedicate my whole life, especially now at this point. You know what I mean? Sure. It's like I got to keep my, my mind open towards other things. But, you know, I'm not going to rule out um, 
you know, wrestling and with sports entertainment because, again, you know what I mean? It's my love and my passion. It's just, uh, you know, I hope for my sake that, you know, I can be just as passionate about something else at some point. That would be uh, well, hey, definitely the best thing for me. Uh, you could always audition for America's Got Talent with the pec dance. <laughs> oh, God, come on. That'd be terrible. <laughs> you guys would be like, not that again. <laughs> Hey, uh, before we let you go, man, give me a give. You, you almost did it earlier, and I, I probably cut you off because I don't want you to bury yourself. But at the end of the day, if you if you bury this guy, you probably won't bury yourself. So, give me a sound bite. You you you, you said David Otunga shouldn't have been out there. So, give me the reason why David Otunga shouldn't should have been fired before you. Well, he's got two left feet. The guy, come on! I just watch him walk around the ring for five minutes. <laughs> Is that a soundbite? <laughs> no, that's, that, that's good. Hey, he's he's got a uh, he's got a, a very successful wife, though. That's that's never bad to have in his. his well, I think pocket. that. I mean, if he he asked Chris asked earlier why he's on TV, I think they're holding on to him. I mean, Michael Cole references that he's married to her every time he's out on TV. So I, I'm pretty sure that's why they hang on to him. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you know, you, you can't even, I don't even know if you can blame Dave, because again, it goes back to um, the system that WWE has, yeah. where they bring guys up sometimes prematurely, you know, I mean, you know, it's just, so, some guys are brought up too soon, man, that's just how it happens, so you can't really, uh, I don't really want to blame Dave Otunga, unless he's still working the same way in a year, maybe. Well, I know you have a Twitter, and uh, as far as your online, your online uh, social avenues, and that's WWE Master P. Uh, you can reach out to him there, WWE Master P, uh, to reach Chris on Twitter. Chris, as always, it's a pleasure. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best of luck, man, and uh, and we'll talk soon. Thanks a lot, boys. Good interview. Thanks, right, thanks man. Thanks, See Chris. You, buddy. All right. Take